Well, that's not what I was expecting to happen. This is a $5,000 workstation that I use to edit videos pretty much every single day. And this is a $200 laptop I found on Craigslist. Hi, Jordan with Motion Array, and a lot of people think that you need an expensive, high-end computer in order to edit amazing videos, but I disagree. So I went out and I found the cheapest possible working laptop on Craigslist that still runs Premiere Pro and wanted to see how it matches up against my daily workstation. Now, here's the thing. We know which computer's gonna win. That's not the point. The point is to see how close we can get these two computers to match up and what, if anything, is stopping you from using a computer like this to edit high-end videos. Now, if you're a nerd like me, I've listed the specs of the computers here, so pause the video here if you're interested to know more about them. But in order to test things out, I'm gonna be timing how long it takes for each of these two computers to create exactly the same video, a fake 20 second commercial, and break it down for each step of the editing journey. I'm also gonna be using a motion array template to help speed along the process. Now, along the way, I'm expecting the laptop to struggle more than a little bit. So I'm also gonna be diving into how to optimize your systems to give you the best possible chance of making a computer like this work as fast as a computer like this. So if you're excited, smash the like button and let's dive into it. Okay, so first up, we're gonna be testing the $5,000 workstation, and I don't think there's a better way to start than just by clicking on the template, opening it up, and see how long it takes Premiere Pro to actually launch. Let's see here, gonna have to quickly press OK, and locating media, and there we go, stop the timer. So that was pretty good. Template's responsive, we're in, we're able to edit things, and that took about eight, nine seconds, but I'll have the actual time in the bottom corner. Next up, we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the laptop, so let's open up Premiere Pro by double-clicking on the template. Not terrible. Surprisingly fast, quickly hit enter. So it is slower, but it's not horrible. Off to a good start, with a grand total of 26 seconds for that to open up. Now the next thing we need to test to see how well these computers are working in Premiere Pro is just to import some footage. So I have all my footage here in a folder. I'm gonna click and drag it in, see how long it takes. Less than two seconds, so that's pretty great. Next for the laptop, what we would do is drag and drop our footage into our project panel, but because I'm guessing that our computer is gonna struggle a bit here, we're gonna optimize everything a little bit first to make sure that we can actually play things back reasonably. We're gonna be creating proxies, and if you don't know what those are, just think of a really low quality video file that your computer has a really easy time using. And we're gonna be creating them in a little bit of a different way. Go up to File, Project Settings, and Ingest Settings. And from here, you're gonna click on Ingest and change it from Copy to Create Proxies. Now we're gonna set the preset. Instead of H.264 low resolution proxies, let's go to ProRes low resolution proxies. You can also do Cineform if you'd like, then hit OK. Okay, so now is where we actually get to start the timer and drag and drop our footage into Premiere Pro. Also not that bad. But here's the thing, Media Encoder is gonna pop up automatically and in the background it's gonna start transcoding all of the files that you just imported. This is gonna really help you to never accidentally miss creating a proxy for a file. All of it's done automatically for you. Even if halfway through the project, you start to bring in new footage. So when this is all finished, we're gonna be able to have a really smooth experience with our footage, but the downside is that for the moment, it's gonna take a while to process this, and we're not gonna be able to use Premiere Pro in the meantime, just because it's gonna be extra sluggish. So while this is happening, I'm gonna go make myself a coffee and then come back later and see exactly how much time it took. Fifteen minutes and twenty-eight seconds. But now let's set up our computer to actually be able to use the proxies that we just created. So over here in your program monitor at the bottom right, you should see a plus icon. This is your button editor. Click it, and you're looking for this button right here called Toggle Proxies. Drag and drop it down to your button bar here. Let go and hit OK. And now, whenever you click this button to turn it blue, we're officially working with our proxies. So now that our computers are closer to being on equal footing, let's take a look at how some of the footage responds when we scrub and we play back, starting out with the desktop. Let's just take a look at some of the footage and see how responsive it is. Nice, pretty smooth, we're at full resolution, and this is an R3D red file, it's raw, so that means we can go into effect controls here and we can actually adjust a lot of the parameters, like even changing up ISO after the fact. 
These are pretty dense files and the fact that we're able to start working with them this buttery smooth at full resolution is a great showing for the workstation. Let's try another one here. So this is actually an H.264 file and you'll see right off the bat here it's not nearly as smooth, which is interesting. Just goes to show you that different codecs actually interact with computers differently. So even though we have a pretty expensive computer right here, it's not able to handle it at full resolution. Let's go down to 1 8 and it's still having some trouble. Let's start, just hit the play button. That's okay. But will the playback be okay on the Craigslist laptop? Let's, uh, let's use this one that we were having trouble playing with on our desktop. We start to scrub through it, and you can see that automatically we're having zero trouble playing it here. It's having absolutely no lag time, zero time between pressing spacebar and the footage actually playing. But now let's turn proxies off, and you can start to see a bit of a difference here. Ooh, yep, we're, uh, we're having trouble. So I think you can see exactly why proxies are so important. Now, the last thing that we need to do is optimize our laptop a little bit more to give us the best possible experience. Go to the wrench icon here, you can click it, and then you can see something here called high quality playback. You wanna make sure that this is disabled so that the check mark goes away. This will help to ensure that Premiere isn't trying really hard to give you the best possible image. It's going to value speed over how nice and crisp your image looks. Then let's go up here to edit, preferences, memory, give it a second to load. And here we're gonna take the amount of RAM reserved for other applications and drop it down as low as we possibly can here. Next, we're gonna be a little bit proactive and just do a safety feature here. Go back up to edit, preferences, and now we're gonna go to auto save. Normally by default, it should be set to save every 15 minutes, but we're gonna drop it down all the way to five minutes, just because the chances of something crashing or going wrong with this computer is more likely than our other one. So now even though we technically haven't even placed down a single clip onto the timeline, let's start the timer back up again and get to work creating our edit. Find a clip with that same outward motion, we might be able to get a match cut out of it. So let's search through here and see if we can find another, oh no. No, Premiere. I was looking through footage. You're not even the computer that's supposed to crash. Well, I'm going to restart Premiere and add this to the workstation's total time, but uh, that's not what I was expecting to happen. Okay, so next let's move on to color grading and let's scroll forward here until we find a clip that we wanna edit. That one looks like a good example. Let's double click, dive into the template and let's take a look at this piece of footage. So it's a great shot, it's just a little bit faded. I uh, wanna make it pop a little bit more, maybe brighten it up. So you can either go to a Lumetri color here. Uh, let's go to some basic corrections and just see how it responds to some changes. Really responsive, just immediately off the bat, implements the changes that I want it to. And just like that, we've already got something that feels a lot better. There's also the other option you can, because this is an R3D file, you can actually go to effect controls and edit the red source settings. Let's change the ISO, make it a little bit brighter. That's looking better. Contrast. Yeah, that looks nice. So we can see that So we had before, after. Really simple to make those changes. Everything's really rapidly responding. And I don't think it's gonna take us long at all to finish the color correction and grading for the rest of our project. So I'm about to start doing color correction and grading on the laptop, but I just wanted to show you quickly how our computer is handling the edit so far. You can see here that we can actually scrub through and it's sticking a little bit in some places, but it's not nearly as bad as I would have expected. It's not quite as smooth as the desktop, but it's still more than enough. We can even play and it is sticking a bit in some places, but it's actually playing through and giving us a good illustration of what our footage is looking like. Now quickly before we go into color correcting this particular clip, I wanna change up what the text is actually saying. So let's dive in and let's take a look at the text. Let's double click and great. And let's take a look at our final sequence and see how it looks. Cool. Now our new text is showing. So let's dive in and take a look at the clip instead. And let's see how responsive this is when it comes to color grading. So you can see first, really responsive. If we turn off proxies, having a lot of trouble. So let's just start by taking a look at Lumetri Color. And let's see if we can make some just quick adjustments to it. 
Let's start with some extreme uh, exposure changes just to see how it responds. And it's actually pretty responsive. Let's try extremely changing the tint, not too bad. Sorry, the temperature. So it can take a little bit of time for it to actually show up. Okay, so with that, we're officially done. We've added footage to our timeline. We've added footage to our template to give it some extra pizzazz in some locations. We've done a round of color correction, color grading. We've also put a nice little sound mix under everything to make it sound extra sweet. And then we didn't stop the timer until everything was successfully exported. And for all intents and purposes, they're virtually identical. I'm gonna show you the final result in just a second, but this template that we used comes in a vertical and a horizontal format. So if you're interested, we've posted the vertical version on our Instagram page for you to check out if you're wondering what that looks like. But because YouTube works better in horizontal, in my opinion, we're gonna show you that final result right now. But now is the time that we've all been waiting for. It's time to actually see how long it took to create each of these edits. So drum roll please, and let's take a look at how each of these broke down. So to start the time it took Premiere Pro to open up at all was 11 seconds on the desktop and 26 seconds on the Craigslist computer. Time to import and create automatic proxies for our footage was less than two seconds on the desktop because we didn't actually create proxies for it and 15 minutes and 28 seconds on the Craigslist computer. The actual structural edit placing clips down in their order and getting timing and pacing right was 21 minutes and 42 seconds versus 27 minutes and 55 seconds. Color grade took 14 minutes and 37 seconds versus 19 minutes and 50 seconds. The audio and sound mixing took seven minutes and one second versus 10 minutes and 17 seconds. And finally, the exporting process took three minutes and 59 seconds on the desktop and a whopping 34 minutes and 54 seconds on the cheap laptop. So there was actually a significant difference between these two with the laptop taking more than twice as long to complete the same edit. So what's the take home message? Well, at the end of the day, it does look like the amount of money that you spend and the kind of computer that you have does make a significant difference to the speed and experience of your editing. But at the same time, price made absolutely zero difference to the quality of our final video. The only thing holding us back using the laptop was the amount of time we were willing to spend and the amount of frustration that we were willing to endure. There's other intangible things that make a difference to your editing experience, like how much of the creative flow and experience is interrupted by having to wait for a lagging cursor or an autosave button to pop up for more than 15 seconds or for Premiere Pro to crash and shut down on you and you have to wait for it to open back up. But that last one is a good example of how that's not entirely entirely dependent on the price of your computer. In fact, the only computer that actually crashed was our $5,000 desktop. And while the laptop was significantly slower, it didn't ever completely fail on us, which is a huge win. Just to be totally clear, I'd never try to argue that a $200 computer is just as good as a $5,000 computer. But what I am trying to put forward is that while the computer that you're using is important, it's never as important as you, the creator who's actually telling it what to do. Your skill and capability inside a program like Premiere Pro, as well as your creativity to get around certain problems is so much more important that it actually causes a computer 25 times more expensive to create exactly the same edit only two times more quickly. If you're looking for more ways to save time editing while getting amazing looking results, then templates might be exactly what you're looking for. This is the one for Motion Array that I used in this video, so feel free to check it out if you'd like, as well as all of our plugin transitions, some of which are 100% free and I actually used in this video. But that's about it for this video. If you guys liked it, please consider liking as well as subscribing and click the bell icon to never miss another video from us. We've got a lot of amazing stuff coming up in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.